That's bullshit. Your kids will, uh, you will live long enough, unfortunately, for them to embarrass you. They, you will live long enough for them to, uh, you know, make you sick to your stomach. I mean, believe me, the best of kids. That the cows, they used to put cows on trains there in Slaughterhouse. That's what it was famous for for 100 years. And so uh, when he said he wanted to leave me and I told him, so uh, we arranged and he wound up down with a, a Sid and Perry Bass and Rainwater was working with Sid and Perry Bass. And so the next uh, deal, healthcare deal, as I uh, recall, the um, that Rainwater was gonna do, um, he did it with uh, Rick and Rick uh, put up his, uh, he started, he, start, he put in a hundred grand. So he, the first big deal he did was he had a hundred grand as life savings. And the uh, story is, and it's pretty close to being the truth that he had owned a Dunkin' Donut shop since he was in high school. Senator Scott is tight with his money. I mean, he he, he knows the serial numbers on the fucking dollar bill. And uh, the uh, and so then he had, I think, two or possibly three um, additional uh, Dunkin' Donuts. And he worked his way to college and law school. And then uh, he sold them. It's hard to believe that he could sell three Dunkin' Donuts and only get a hundred grand. But anyway, uh, maybe that's all they were back in those days. And uh, he put in the hundred grand and uh, that was the beginning of the Columbia Healthcare. The model that you're following and the model and the secret sauce that I'm gonna give you when we're not on YouTube, fuckers. The, the case studies you want that you're never gonna get. Um, <laughs> There's got to be some fucking rank, and, uh, rank has the privilege, and rank being you here. here. So uh, these assholes that always say, why don't you put everything? Why don't you put, well, put it all on Torrin? Um, and again, the only reason I started giving away all my product is when somebody about 10 years ago said, um, are you aware that most of your stuff's free on, <coughs> <coughs> and I choked just thinking about it. <coughs> and I said, what are you talking about? So they printed it out and I, I fucking, they said I went ballistic. I don't recall the ballistic part. And I said, you mean, this is free. And uh, I said, yeah, I said, well, we're gonna give the product away free. And that's how this started, okay? Plus, we don't have to have customer service and all these whining bitches, cunts, whining because the, the page in the book is bent and this and that. Uh, and so it really uh, saved up a lot of time. It saved up a lot of time. Oh, come on, doc. This is a, uh, a whining from down under. Oh, and so, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> or, or no, not, not. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so the rest is history and if you recall uh, uh, now Senator Scott his first acquisition was in a few hundred million and then his next act he made three acquisitions bam 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 and normally that is a red flag meaning that one one of the first acquisitions was tanking and when you want to buy the second acquisition and the third acquisition is as soon as humanly possible so you can hide the fact that the first one is in the tank. And of course he, I'm sure Senator Scott would deny that, but uh, uh, if you learned anything from me, you learned that. Uh, because when I was making the acquisition, most of them, I, we were a public company. So instead of reporting earnings every three months like they do in America, in uh, the Great Britain, you repay, uh, report every six months. So you had six months to make up for the fuck up before you had to put it in the public domain. And the rest is history. And he built the largest healthcare company in the history of the world. And then um, the Clintons got after him and, um, Story is, legend has it, that uh, he testified in front of Congress as being the CEO of the largest healthcare company in the world at the time. And uh, he made uh, Hillary Clinton look like a fool. Because if you remember, President Clinton gave the healthcare program, uh, the revamping of it to his wife. And so, uh, and Rick is slicker than baby shit. I mean, so he made her look like a fool. And so uh, after the hearings, legend has it again, he, uh, she told uh, then uh, just CEO uh, Rick Scott that when Bill and I get reelected, we're gonna have your head on a stick. They got reelected and then the Department of Justice went after him uh, and almost put him in jail and crucified him basically. It made, a, made him leave. Uh, they split up Columbia Healthcare and at least two entities as I recall, maybe more than two. And so, uh, but he started with Rainwater and uh, originally the Bass Brothers and uh, he's made a shit ton of money. And then he took about 10 years off uh, to manage his own money. Uh, I wrote him a long letter, which is confidential, but I wrote him a long letter before all this happened. And then uh, he came out of nowhere and he moved to Florida and uh, became governor now senator uh, and he's really he's a smart kid. so that but the boys 
Okay, the boys, okay? You look kind of legitimate there, guys. No, no, Tony doesn't really. You do, but Tony doesn't. Tony looks like a fucking mobster. You know, uh, a, a casino boss or something, you know? Yeah, he likes that idea. See, he's smiling, you know? Showgirls, you know, the whole nine yards. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, but um, we have a number uh, of, uh, of uh, kids, uh, mentees like these two brothers that uh, I get pictures from time to time of them uh, uh, stepping up in the world, so to speak. And uh, the, uh, it's, but I mean, w when, uh, in my judgment, when uh, Senator Scott becomes president uh, after Trump, uh, although I'm hearing more and more that uh, Trump's gonna uh, go to the, uh, uh, and change the constitution so he can be president more than twice. That's what I heard. I mean, uh, so uh, Rick may be too old to run for president after Trump run, is president four or five times. But um, uh, I think that most of the uh, uh, heads of countries are um, envy Putin. Not for how he acts or does, but I mean the fact that he just, I'm gonna be president forever. Because once you have that power, you don't wanna fucking let it go. And it's the same when you have a lot of money. When I say I'd rather be dead than poor, I mean it. I'd do just like fucking Hitler if he really did it. And I put a boat in my head because there's no fucking comparison. I mean. I've never been depressed, but I'm sure I would be depressed then. It, it would be debilitating. And I would just put a fucking, and when you do it, guy, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, you know, you do it right. You stick the, the barrel in the roof of your mouth. So it actually kind of goes in the roof of your mouth. So, cause I've had kids blow their face off cause they fuck it up. They can't even kill themselves right. <laughs> metaphorically, I would never, everybody deserves to have a life and everybody deserves, fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> do it right. Do it fucking right when you blow your brains out. And, um, but, um, and there's several uh, uh, teaching points, one of which is you get big, powerful people on your ass, like the Clintons back in those days. You might as well give your ass or soul to God because their ass, your ass is gonna be theirs. They have unlimited money, unlimited power, and you're dead meat, you're dead meat. We had a guy two, a couple seminars ago who spent about a million dollars fighting a big, rich guy in the United States. And even though he won in court, he lost. His life's ruined forever. You Google his name, first thing that comes up is not good. Uh, and he's true, he's totally He's uh, 57 years old. He's, uh, we had another big guy um, six months ago who fought another guy, same thing. Um, he lost, everything was taken away from him. And of course you guys run and put assets in your wife's name and all that. That doesn't work. That only works in the fucking movies. So how can we do it? Huh? Well, no, we're not, well, I'm not gonna tell it on YouTube, you fucking monkey. Okay. <laughs> that only works in the movies. Um, they're, 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 one law, is if you transfer assets, and it depends where in the world, within three years of you losing the judgment, they, the, the court deems that you did it just to, so you wouldn't, uh, you'd be judgment proof. But in this world, um, if they have a lot of money, there is no, you can't be judgment proof, you just can't. And um, but that sounds good when, you know, you're gonna put your assets in your wife's name. And then what I like is when your wife leaves you. That's, you know, and uh, just like when you say that you, uh, your significant others are gonna be supportive, sure they are. You know, uh, we talked about one yesterday, highly successful guy and his wife leaves. With the kids. Huh? With the kids. She loves the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah, no, fuck those kids. I'm telling you, if you really, in your inner guts, kids, and Brian is still in some euphoric stage because he's got two new sons. That's bullshit. Your kids will, uh, you will live long enough, unfortunately, for them to embarrass you. They, you will live long enough for them to, uh, you know, make you sick to your stomach. I mean, believe me, the best of kids. Uh, one of the leading child psychiatrists uh, told me uh, many years ago, his father was the psychiatrist for the LAPD back many years ago. And uh, he said that you have a one in three shot. This is if you do everything right. You've got a one in three shot for the kid to turn out all right. One in three. So he says, have three. Then you got, then you got a shot. You've got a one in three. Either they're gonna be sick, God forbid. Allah forbid, they go to all kinds of things. But even the best kids will make you wish you never had them. When I say, I wish I could do it, bend it like Beckham. You remember that movie? But I can't do that. When, now with my artificial knees, if I t lean back too far, I lose my balance. So I, I hold on to the chair and then I kick the kid's head to the curb. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yesterday at the breakout, you told the story about giving a guy in Tennessee a check. I was wondering if you could just... Oh, yes. Um, uh, Tony was saying about how you treat the people well and you pay them. Of course, him treating people well, him and his brother here, is not what I call treating people well. There's a big dichotomy, and it's called dollars and cents, you know. 
Tony, you know, I made a joke about they take him to Starbucks uh, for lunch or something. He probably doesn't even do that. But the um, when we uh, took over the Bow Valley Coal Company uh, many years ago, now you got to remember the Canadians. But the Canadians are making a comeback. I mean, I, I got a bunch of kids, uh, superstars, Canadians, one of which is sitting in the room. And uh, the uh, uh, Hugh Carey made one phone call when he was on our board, and it was a phone call to Walter Riston. And this is all public record. I'm not telling any secrets. Um, Walter Riston, who was then CEO of Citibank, and uh, we're sitting in La Grande Wee uh, for lunch, and I was drinking my lunch, which I normally did. I drank my lunch and my breakfast alcohol almost 40 years. So how's my program worked out? So we're sitting there, Governor Kerry, former governor of New York, one of the most powerful uh, governors in the United States when he was governor. He comes in and he uh, orders a martini right away and he says, what are we, what are we working on, boss? And I said, well, uh, so far, I haven't got the money to buy the coal company yet. We've been turned down by everybody, kind of like you, right? Um, and, the, um, and he said, well, why don't you go to Citibank? We've already been there. They turned us down. A guy named Dr. John Clark, as I recall, who was the head of, of uh, uh, mining credits at Citibank at the time, PhD in geology or something. And he said, well, give me a phone. And in those days, the phones were like bricks. And uh, the uh, and if you were any kind of businessman, you don't want to carry that big brick. Now, some of the nerd engineers carried them on their hips like holsters, you know, uh, with their pens, 42 pens in their pocket like this, you know. <clears throat> so we got a phone and uh, he, he, he had the direct number and he called John, uh, uh, Riston, uh, Walter Riston, excuse me, the CEO of the bank. He said, Walt, how are you? This is you, blah, blah, blah. Can you join us for a drink? No, I'm busy right now. And he said, uh, how much money do we need? And I told him, 85 million. And he says, we need 115 million. <laughs> We need 115 million for uh, this coal deal. Well, I mean, we're the second biggest lender in coal. You ought to come and see us. And then uh, he said, okay, well, I'm gonna send my chairman, uh, uh, Danny Pena, over. So within about an hour, I'm there. But we had already seen the bank. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, by the time I got there, it was 135 million. So it went from 85 to 115 to 135. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I asked him, uh, he brought in the guy, uh, the credit head credit guy, I named uh, Dr. Uh, John Clark. And he said, uh, well, why is it that uh, we passed on this? Well, they've got no coal operator. I mean, no CEO guy. And this is a big mining operation, big mine, a lot of mines in uh, West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, and Tennessee. Hazard County, uh, Kentucky, that reduced the hazard. And um, so I said, well, who are the top four or five coal operators in the country? And they named uh, five guys. And the fifth guy was uh, uh, Goins, Clyde Goins, who was the outgoing CEO of Bow Valley Coal. And they said, but he's gone because he's retiring. I don't think he's retiring. Now, I'm making this up on the fly. Now, you wouldn't, none, nobody in this room, except for maybe the Goomba brothers, would make it up on the fly. Now, some of you would construe that as a lie. I didn't. I was just telling something that I knew I was going to be able to get done. And so, um, and they said, well, if, Go if Goins is there, fuck, this is a done credit. This is, anybody in New York will fund this. I heard that. <laughs> so I left there. I went to the airport. I rented a plane, a jet, and we flew uh, down there. And uh, in the meantime, my crack staff, and the reason why I say crack, because it could stand like, like crap. My crap staff is lining up a meeting with um, Mr. Goins. And I didn't know that, um, Hazard County, Kentucky uh, was dry. I thought the, 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 there can't be any more dry states, but there are, or dry counties, not states. <laughs> so we met at a Holiday Inn and uh, there was a, um, a, um, a paper bag around a bottle. I didn't know what was in the bottle. I then found out it was Jack Daniels because I was into Jack in those days. Jack was back. Jack for breakfast, I brushed my teeth with Jack Daniels. I mean, everything was Jack Daniels. And uh, so he's uh, saying they were a really nice guy. Uh, he was uh, 65 years old, and that's why they were booting him out. And I asked the question um, about uh, him, um, uh, what's the biggest bonus he ever got? And I told you yesterday, $20,000. He used to represent 40% of the bottom line for 25 years. And he gave him, you know, a, a Tony, Jason, 20 grand. One time he got 20 grand. And the only time he got that 20 grand, because he was getting ready to leave. So they bought him off for 20 grand. Okay, he should have given him 200 grand, but they gave him 20. They're making hundreds of millions of dollars, 20 grand. But that's that's a, a Jason Tony kind of, like a tip. You probably tip two bucks. When you, you spend seven, 800 bucks at dinner, when you give them two bucks, and you make them split that with a waiter, the, the everybody. And so I said, I pulled out envelope, as they say in, in Kentucky, out of my pocket, a plain envelope, and I put it in front of me, and I, I just kept it there for about three, four minutes. And he kept looking at it, didn't say anything, kept looking at it, didn't say anything. And I said, well, you know, um, you, you probably would think that you haven't been treated fairly. And he stood up, he said, and that stood up, he sat up straight, he says, that's an understatement, sir. But I'm not a complainer, I'm a worker, I'm a warrior, I'm a frontline uh, warrior. And I s shoved the envelope in front of him, and I said, 
that's yours no matter what happened. He looked around like he's looking for the IRS or something. <laughs> and then he opened envelope, he put it right down, and he says, no matter what I decide, because I haven't asked him anything yet, no matter what, no matter how this conversation goes. And he didn't pick it up yet, and I said, well, I want you to consider staying on another five years or until you want to leave. <laughs> I said, I never, I never thought highly enough of uh, retirement to begin with. They were shoving me out the door. You got yourself a, a CEO. I'm immediately on the phone, boom, and the Citibank guys are cranking out the uh, credit forms. And we didn't really go through any committees. Um, and uh, we got 135 million. We bought a couple other assets in addition to uh, Bow Valley Co. We bought uh, Bow Valley Construction Pipeline, Bow Valley Drilling, and a few other things that weren't really for sale in the package. And uh, the rest is history. And then he, uh, until uh, I got thrown out, was the leading coal operator. I mean, uh, in fact, the uh, exploration side of the business leaned on the coal side of the business because it was just, we had 25, 30, 40 year contract with various states. And so they just, the company shit money. I mean, uh, we bought it for like 1.3 uh, times cash flow. I mean, and it just shit money. And it supported a lot of other endeavors, not all of which were successful. <laughs> because when you have endless amounts of money, then you're not as stringent. And that's why big companies have budgets, as Sally would say, to keep constraints on you. And uh, nobody likes constraints. Uh, ask Josh Kim about constraints. Uh, uh, the um, but uh, it allowed us to grow. It allowed us to be uh, a big, big, big uh, deal in the, uh, not just the exploration business, but that's why we called it, uh, I now know why I called it Great Western Resources, because we were gonna have more than one resource. But me paying people up front, um, and in some of the businesses you're gonna see that to get their attention, you just give them 25 grand. Instead of all that bonus money that you're gonna split up for yourself, you give the, owner, the old owner, uh, 25 grand or, or some number. And as Tony pointed out uh, uh, quite vividly yesterday, well, what do you need? You ask them. So then you can more or less corner them in uh, to uh, what you want them to do. But paying out, you have the money to pay out. Uh, the, the, the challenge is when you start paying bonuses based on transaction, they get used to it. And then you're not making the acquisition. Then the rumors, well, is the old man satiated? Or you're the old man or the boss. What's wrong? How come we're not buying anything anymore? And uh, then they start to leave. And uh, your transaction junkies, your team that you have built up, uh, they'll come to you, depending on your relationship with them, and say, well, what's, what's, what's going on here, Dan? Uh, you know, you brought us in because we were gonna do a lot of deals and we were gonna get paid for those deals. And then the directors are the last ones to complain, if you will, because they never got any money anyway. The first money they ever saw is from you and, uh, and they, they're seeing a big picture. And that's why uh, the, um, uh, the, the employees, I believe in transparency from the top to the bottom to the person that drives your car or cleans the floor, that uh, everybody has to know that everybody's not getting paid bonuses because we're not doing deals. Now we have existing cash flow, and you can uh, pay bonuses out of existing cash flow. Um, and uh, I don't like to pay bonuses at the end of the year because then they equate them to Christmas bonus or holiday bonus, and they're not. That's not what it is, you know. And and in their mind, there's always a Christmas or there's always always a holiday season, and so they figure that they're always going to get a bonus. But if we're doing no deals, or we've only we only lost money one six month period in. Um, in the history of the company when I was CEO of a public company, once in 10 years. Uh, and uh, so when there was no Christmas bonus, in their mind, fuck, I was the devil. They always thought I was kind of the devil reincarnated anyway, but when I didn't pay the Christmas bonus, because then they start to depend on it. They budget getting 15 or 19 or 22% of their yearly compensation at Christmas. You didn't tell them that. No place in any papers. And then you, you most likely get a morale uh, problem. But that's a story about Clive. And um, the uh, during that same, period, um, the, there were companies getting indicted by the Department of Justice for uh, uh, padding and uh, bribing to get a state coal contract. And we weren't involved, but uh, the, the guy from, uh, I think it was South Carolina Power, who was gonna testify in front of uh, the Congress, uh, went on bird shooting with his best buddies, his best mates, and you use a, a small shot, uh, use like 20 gauge for birds, so you don't fuck them up. The birds, you don't fuck up. And uh, by, well, these are one of those guys that he went to uh, University of West Virginia with. These are his mates, right? And uh, somehow uh, he got shot in the back with a 12 gauge. And during the uh, coroner's inquest and, the, and all the shit that you go through, they, they ascertained that somehow when he was pulling the guns out of the back of the uh, uh, pickup truck, somehow he, uh, the gun got out of the sheath, you know, the thing, and they're not loaded. They shouldn't be loaded when they're, and he pulled, and somehow he pulled it so far back with such uh, a quickness that he shot himself in the back. Even though there wasn't a 12-gauge shotgun 
on the premises when they pulled the slugs out of his back, they're 12 gauge, and they've been shooting 20 gauge. And that's how uh, people uh, don't testify in uh, in that part of the world. You, because you, in those days, you could get somebody whacked for 50 bucks, 50. And sometimes they say, we'll kill this guy for free, but you put us on the line so when you have some real shit to pay. Back in the hollers of Kentucky.